And welcome to Hero Power. I am your host, Avantes, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Zoroshio. What is up, gang? We are on the other side of BlizzCon. We have all kinds of stuff to talk about. Such a huge but, weekend. Oh my, big, big weekend, not only for BlizzCon, but both of us had a lot going on. So before we get into pretty much the bulk of the news, which is all talking about BlizzCon and what was re revealed and released, how was your week? Week was good. Uh, as I said last week on the show, uh, my wife and I were traveling out of town for our 18th wedding anniversary, so I had to get all my dailies and quests, weekly quests done in like the first three days of the week. So I grinded real hard on Hearthstone Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, knocked out all of my quests uh, for the week, and then uh, the wife and I left Thursday and drove to Asheville, North Carolina, where we spent the weekend just kind of getting away from work and and uh, everything, all the rigors of life, and just kind of relaxing and enjoying some, some time together, exploring the greater Asheville, Bryson City, Cherokee areas, and just had a, had a good time. Uh, of course, our actual anniversary date is tomorrow, which is uh, uh, Monday, February 22nd, and uh, I know you and uh, your wife were doing something very similar because your anniversary is the day after ours on Tuesday the 23rd, right? Yeah, BlizzCon couldn't have been at a worse time for us. I think we've always <laughs> talked about that because... Uh, your anniversary is the 22nd, and Versica's anniversary is the 22nd. Mine's the 23rd, so it, it's convenient that we all kind of can can take a break that week. I think in the past we might have uh, oh, yeah. been lax on the show that week, but uh, BlizzCon's going on, so of course I had to watch that. But before BlizzCon hit, I was like, well, BlizzCon usually drops something that might yeah, balance update or something. So let me go ahead and push for legend. So I went ahead and got legend. Uh, I, I, I decided just to sleeve up the Lee broom paladin and just jam it home. Uh, cause I knew, I knew Lee broom paladin would bring me to legend. So I went on like a, it's like a 78% win rate, something silly like that. And ended up getting legend. Mm -hmm. And then I pretty much have just been phoning in hearthstone since then, because we have all this, the new content being, announced uh at blizzcon so i played a lot of uh a lot of battlegrounds i was playing a lot of when i say phone in hearthstone i mean constructed ladder uh, so I, I played a lot of hearthstone and battlegrounds and just had a lot of fun with that which i realized that I, I i focused too much on the legend grind and lately i've been focusing on doing well in legend once i've gotten legend uh and i need to take a step back and, and realize there's other modes there's other ways to play this game. There's there's other ways to enjoy this game that's not just a stressful ladder grind. Uh, and they're going to be coming out with new game mode, which we've we've talked about before, but they actually announced it. So I'm really excited for that. And then, of course, me and my wife went and did our anniversary trips, and, and, and we went out to dinner and, and, and kind of did our rounds on Saturday uh, because most of the Hearthstone news was announced on Friday. So I just watched the VOD for all the stuff I missed on Saturday. <laughs> uh, and there were some good content. So, oh, yeah. So kind of getting into the news, before we actually get into what was announced and everything, BlizzCon obviously happened Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was weird timing, though, because they started at 2 p.m. Pacific time, which was 5 p.m. And I kind of got that for Friday because... Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, especially on the East Coast, you know, are, aren't going to watch it until they, to, till they get home from work and things like that. So I kind of got that start time on Friday. But they did, I think the start time on Saturday was about the same time, which was really weird. Because yes. normally they start like 10 a.m. Pacific time. Well, and, time. and yeah, normally, normally on the first day of BlizzCon, they start at like between two and four Eastern yeah. and yeah. then they start really early on Saturday. And this, this year, yeah. because everything was online and, and all of the, the things were pre-recorded, they just kind of yeah. went at their own schedule. Um, I, I do have to, 
I do have to say I want to want to shout out uh, Twitch for muting Metallica for playing their own music. Uh, Did that happen? See, I good job. <laughs> they so they muted Metallica for playing their own music, and and I guess yeah. that kind of makes sense because it wasn't on a Matt Metallica stream it was on a blizzard stream which oh, means it, it wouldn't matter it wouldn't matter well, the it shouldn't the, matter the guitarist yeah. the guitarist for dragon force has his own channel where he plays his own music and he gets copyright strikes against himself all the time so <laughs> silly so maybe maybe blizzard didn't fill out the right paperwork or whatnot but i, I found that hilarious yeah that that happened yeah. now i watched it on youtube Congratulations, uh, Twitch. You continue to screw up day after day after day. You should just we, do the gaming world a favor and shut down. And and we wonder why uh, Blizzard Esports is on uh, YouTube. No, that, that and, and that gives it a whole other conversation that, yeah, that I'm yeah. not ready to get in on top of all our other news. But aside from all the, the, the Blizzard announcements, the game announcements, or specifically Hearthstone announcements, did... Did, did did BlizzCon Line 2021 meet your expectations? So, uh, as I said, I was out of town for Friday and Saturday, but we got back late Saturday night. Uh, I guess this I should say we got back late last night because this is we are recording on Sunday, and um, I spent four and a half hours after I got home catching up on all the BlizzCon stuff. Um, I watched all of the Hearthstone panels. I have not yet watched the Battlegrounds or the Streamer Showdown. I'm going to watch those at a later date. But I watched all the Hearthstone panels and the uh, Innkeeper voiceover <laughs> thing and the Bob's Advice, which Bob's Advice is fantastic if you haven't yes. watched it. Some great life lessons there. If you're having trouble with women, show them your MMR. That always helps. Just, just don't, uh, just don't do it in public. You, you could get in trouble for showing your MMR in public. Uh, so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed BlizzCon as a whole. Now, did it meet my expectations? Yes. I really did. I'll be honest. I didn't expect much. There doing an, an event on an off cadence release cycle. This is February. We've already seen all the wow stuff. We've already seen a lot of the other games and, and now it's perfect timing for Hearthstone. So it met my expectations that I thought we'd get a lot of content for Hearthstone, uh, especially with set rotation. Um, was it what I wanted? I'm going to say no. And the reason I say no is because because a lot of this was pre-recorded, I would have liked to seen a little more effort put into content. Maybe them start a little earlier so they could add a couple more things. Now, it could be that they didn't have time to plan for a lot of this. And I get that. If they plan to do an online version again next year around the same time, I'm hoping they start planning now. So... So uh, I'm, I know I'm, I'm in the opposite camp because looking at the schedule, it was laid out just like all the past BlizzCons. I mean, there was nothing any different in the content. Well, partially true. What I think what I missed the most is the BlizzCon live panel where they shoot over to uh, the panelists, the, 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 the hosts, and tell us, what was just announced and they talked to a dev to maybe get a little further deep dive insight into a couple things they said, or they talked to, uh, you know, some content creators and, and now that made sense because it's a live event and they're setting up for the next announcement. So they need that filler time, but I would have liked to have an actual like desk of two people sitting, even if they were from their home. Okay. Uh, I, I want to point and, and, out and, for our listeners some of you may not be aware of this. Zoroshio went to BlizzCon in 2018, okay? You might not, not know. <laughs> not You might not know. Not all of us have had that opportunity. As someone who has, who has attended BlizzCon virtually through the virtual ticket, 
every year it's been available going back to like 2008, this was just like any other BlizzCon for me. There wasn't anything out of place that I didn't I, that I didn't recognize as oh yeah. this is what they do every year. It, and, and I don't want to say it was bad because it, it it was not bad. I enjoyed BlizzCon this year. I just missed that kind. I think there should have been an MC, one person or or a team of two people that are okay. Now we're gonna shoot over to Hearthstone. Now we're gonna shoot over Diablo. And also the Diablo. The Hearthstone, the World of Warcraft Up Next panel all happened simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So you could not watch all of them live. Uh, you had to watch, pick one to watch live and go back and watch the other ones on VOD. Well, I mean, uh, you which, can't do that in person either. Yeah, you can. You, you, can they, be they, in, you can be in all the different stages at the exact same time. Well, no, but they staggered them, so you could, you, I mean, you'd have to run. Exactly. But if, you on, <laughs> if you were watching on the virtual ticket, you could watch the one what's up, what's what's next, and then, and then you know, flip the channel to the other ups next, and, and then hear it live. Now, I, I get that, you know, with the current climate and it being online, that probably isn't as appealing. And, and maybe it is because I've been to BlizzCon, and I want that. I'm at BlizzCon feeling. Yeah. And it, it was a little lacking there, but I, get it. I will You're say spoiled. this. You're spoiled. Okay. <laughs> I'm spoiled. <laughs> I'll say that. I will say this, though. What they did give us was very detailed. Yes. And and the fact that they were able to pre-record it, they did a very good job of laying it all out. Uh, given the current social... Uh, climate in the United States right now. I think they did a bang up job. And if they're forced to do the same format next year, uh, I hope they learn from some stuff mm -hmm. and present a better, uh, better kind of environment. The, I did watch the Battlegrounds exhibition, and it was really, really fun to watch. I, I you could watch tell it. it was. You could tell it was pre-recorded mainly because, literally minutes after winning. Uh, Brian Kibler tweeted a picture of the trophy and they clearly weren't somewhere where he could have been given the trophy. So they've always obviously sent it to him ahead of time. Well, I say took a picture of him with, it wasn't him with the trophy. It was Shiro with the trophy because he credits the win to Shiro, which he should. Right. right. Uh, so it was, it was a lot of, it was just a lot of fun. And the live experience was really, really really good because i was watching the uh hearthstone and as they were showing us stuff i couldn't keep up with copy pasting so i can put it in discord and i could literally pause it live and then copy paste what i needed mm -hmm. and then hit play and it there was no buffering or any issues with it or anything right so um from, aside from the, the the Hearthstone announcements and, and and all the other game announcements, I think they did a very good job with the tools they were given. Uh, I do know a lot of this stuff was short notice with uh, a lot of the community submissions only had like a two-week deadline for mm -hmm. some of them for like costume contests and things like that. So uh, given all those restrictions, I think they did a great job. The, the kind of cameo... Uh, videos they made of the innkeeper impression uh, videos, which was mainly just content creators and streamers trying to do innkeeper impressions and doing them very badly. Yes. Except for one person. Yes. Uh, it, which was funny is a shout out to our friend uh, Scott Bites, who, if you might know him from BlizzCon, he dresses up as the innkeeper. Uh, every, every year, he says it takes like two hours to get his costume on. He did impressions, and the the, the actual voice actor is like Stone, uh, the the voice yeah, actor of the of Hearthstone. Terrence Brew. Stone, uh, actually, uh, which I love his last name Stone. But anyways, um, he kind of was like, yeah, that was that was good. That was maybe too, too good. good. <laughs> Uh, I might have a problem uh, keeping my job. He's like, as soon as I take care of this Scott guy, I should be good. Yes. So, yeah. Big shout out to Scott in impressing the original voice actor, which I 
dabble with voices myself and I could tell where Scott was coming from when, you know, bites, when he does that impression, a lot of people are trying to impersonate the innkeeper and Scott clearly was trying to impersonate Terrence stone Mm -hmm. doing the innkeeper. And he was spot on. Yeah. So big shout out to him. And then of course they did the Bob's, uh, tavern thing, which that video was really good because when they first started out, and when I say video good, really good, I mean the editing was good because when they first started out, it was almost like they were going to ask questions and just use the voice lines from Bob to answer them like a magic eight ball. Because mm-hmm. the first few answers were just normal voiceover stuff that Bob does in the game. And then it started getting a little more specific. And I was like, whoa, okay. They actually did, they got the voice actor to record these responses. So that was really cool. I think I think those type of things filled in the gaps of what was missing from the live performances and things. And speaking of live performances, we had Metallica play. We had uh, DJ Hodor, uh, uh, Nairn, Christian Nairn. He DJed the opening music, and it was amazing. Um we had a K-pop performances. They're just they they used those performances instead of doing them all at the end. They kind of used them as filler throughout the day. And whoever did the content lineup should definitely be given a raise because they did a very good job yeah. of editing that stuff and kind of making you feel like like there wasn't this you know announcement cut, another announcement cut. A content, you know, you know, streaming content for whatever, you know, whether it be the community event or something, cut. There was all these little, like, you know, in lack of commercials, kind of transitions where, where you see a performance. And, and big props to Metallica, because a lot of times big artists like <clears throat> Train will come, up, come to BlizzCon, and it's just another performance. Mm-hmm. They don't kind of connect with the attendees. I don't even think the lead singer train knew he was at BlizzCon he, or what they even did there. Right. Metallica actually referenced their 2014 performance. I remember that vividly because mm-hmm. they literally had to throw all their extra picks and stuff out in the state, uh, out to the crowd and say, we don't have anything else to play with. You know, they <laughs> did like, they did like four encores. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And, yeah. And they played from, it looked like their garage studio. And at one point, there was just this random stool sitting there, and the bassist just kicked it over. <laughs> so it, was really, it was really neat to see them kind of, in lieu of having a you know an audience, knowing that we're watching it for the performance as well as the music. Yeah. You know, so I really enjoyed BlizzCon. I would have liked to see a little bit more, but it did meet my expectations. Yeah, I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. Um, like I said, I'm going to go back and rewatch some of the other stuff. I absolutely, one of my favorite things about BlizzCon is the opening ceremonies. And this mm-hmm. year's opening ceremonies did not disappoint in any way. I enjoyed the video, the video montage um, of players talking about you know, the last 30 years of Blizzard, but we have so much to talk about. We could continue talking yeah. about this for the rest we of the could. day. And we could, and we, and, and shameless plug, we have been talking about it in our Patreon only discord. Yep. If you want to be part of, go to, go to patreon.com slash hero power. Now is the best time to get in because we are constantly filling up the set images. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a bot that puts images in there and, usually we get the images in there about sometimes a couple hours before the bot even puts them in there. So uh, if, if you want to have, you know, up to date information that, that is a one-stop shop. Yeah. Come, we come will... hang out in theory craft with us. That's, it that's was one funny of our favorite things to do. I was taking images and then I was like, did I miss anything? So I popped over to the coin can see discord where ridiculous hat is like very, meticulous in Mm -hmm. in his stuff and i'd gotten some of my stuff in before there and a couple of those images i don't know if it's if if it's true but a couple of them look like they might have been taken from ours because i 
I copy pasted them myself. We, we share identical. <laughs> we do. We oh, we we share. Yeah, yeah. We definitely share. And ridiculous hat is in our channel because he's in every channel. Uh, That's so right. if you if you want another place to reach out to ridiculous hat, our Discord is a great place to do that. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the big announcements from the Hearthstone panels, starting with the Year of the Griffin is coming. And uh, Yes. So I would be remiss if I didn't say Matt at Arms called this. Yes. Because yes. he did say he believed the next one would be Year of the Griffin, and he was right. And, uh... I, so... So, yeah. All right. Let's. There's a lot in Year of the Griffin. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they outlined the uh, three sets. They, you know, they gave us a, a peek at what the outline looks like, as they do every year. They're, they did announce that this is going to be three individual stories, not one overarching year long narrative like they have done in the past. Yeah. And uh, before we go further. I... We don't don't have the image up now, but if you go to the links in our show notes, and a lot a lot of this information we're pulling from the various blogs on our show notes, they have the normal expansion one, expansion two, expansion three, and expansion one is the red gem, which looks like it's on a spearhead, and it's grassy, and it, obviously that's barons, yeah, uh, barons related because they announced that set already. The second one is very plain yes. it's got what looks to be like a cardinal compass star around the side you north southeast west mm -hmm. and then northeast southeast at, at, you know that kind of border with a starry night blue gem with a standard blue and gold banner yep kind of looks like storm wind could be i don't know and then the third one is is like looks like snow with I don't know if those are leaves or feathers and a smashed gem exuding blue and red in the center. So maybe it's maybe the first expansion is Horde, the second expansion is Alliance, and the third expansion is Battle for Azeroth. <laughs> maybe, but this looks more uh, Wrath of the Lich King ish, but not like. Not like Arthas theme, but more right, like right. maybe maybe a specific area in Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, where where has the most snow? Wormrest, probably, probably. And Wormrest is is a central location for both Horde and Alliance to go through, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I know they kind of did a Descent of Dragons, and maybe maybe that's too dragonish. Uh, but yeah, I, I this excites me because these are. These are a little more uh, before they're very, very simple and you don't see a lot of detail you can pick from. These have, in my mind, have a lot of detail in Warcraft. Yeah. Well, let's 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 talk about phase one, because that's yes, that's where we are. Um, if you guys want to see that image, like you said, it's it's in the the blog post. You can get there from our show notes at uh, HeroPowerHS.com. But let's let's talk about the phase one roadmap because as as is usually the case in phase one, there will be set rotation, uh -huh. including the new card expansion. Uh the uh oh gosh, I already forgot the name Forged of it. Forged in the Barons. Forged in the Barons. Yeah. And there will be a mini set. If you look at the roadmap, there is a expansion and mini set for all three phases. So what we yes. saw start with uh Dark Moon Fair looks like uh -huh. it's going to continue over the year of the Griffin. Um, there will be Battlegrounds and Duels updates and Solo Experiences updates. We're also getting the new core set and the classic format that was talked about. There will be seasonal events, new tavern brawls, balance updates, and a new game mode called Mercenaries. Yes. Now, they haven't done a lot of details on mercenaries yet. Uh, it's pretty much so. When they showed us the example map of that, they say changes on each run, and you're gonna have, you're gonna have, I think the total of ten mercenaries. 
uh, and they'll have like three different versions of them based yes. on upgrading them and things like that. A lot of people immediately said Slay the Spire. And they came out with an interview about it, and and it doesn't look like it's going to be – it's it's almost like it's more raid-based, and it is PvE content. Yes. But they did say there will be some PvP portions of mercenaries. So Yeah, when specifically asked uh, – somebody specifically asked Ben Lee, was it going to be PvE or PvP? And he kind of went both to a point. Yeah. So – so it, 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 he said there's going to be times that you will be doing PvP or there'll be options. He also kind of alluded that there might be a challenge mode where you can challenge people with the mercenaries content. Mm -hmm. uh, he did make sure to say that there is not a release date, that it will be sometime this year. It does have it in phase one, but I would cut them a little slack if it goes into phase two. Yeah. Excuse me, phase two or even phase three, because we have a core set with a lot of revamping. We have a new set and we're starting the rotation with three total mini sets through the year. Yeah, there's there's a lot of content coming. If a mercenaries if mercenaries does not drop in the first phase, I think that would be okay. And I think they left themselves some leeway because if you look at phase two and phase three. Phase two is just the basic eight things right. that we saw in all the phases. And then phase three is the basic eight things with one locked thing at the end. Right. So I'm guessing that's probably maybe another new mode that they're, that they're working on. Uh, who knows? They've left themselves a lot of room in phase two and phase three for bleed over. Mm -hmm. And they have said in the past, Celestalon and Nyx are both that, they are working from home and they are realizing there are some, uh, you know, deadlines that don't always hit right. Some deadlines hit faster than others that they're learning this work from home thing. And if they have to sacrifice release dates for the sake of, uh, for the sake of the content being good, they're going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, uh, they also announced, uh, they also announced a new set, which, you know, we we alluded to, Fords and the Barons. They did not announce a release date, which we'll talk more about that yeah. when we get to that portion of the news. So, um, so uh, new game mode, Hearthstone Mercenaries. Uh, there are some returning player challenges coming yes. with the Year of the Griffin as well. You want to talk about that? Yeah, the returning player. Uh, well, they're changing the way returning and uh, new players, new players. So as part of the 20.0 update. So when the new set drops, we're removing fights against Malfurion, uh, Taronda and Hakkar and overhauling the legendary quest line for returning players to reward a total of 15 card packs from recent expansion. So they're obviously going to get the core set for free. Right. So they don't have to give us classic packs anymore. So they're going to give them current content packs, which is something that's been asked of a lot for returning players. Because they're like, I'm getting classic stuff, but if I'm returning, a lot of times I have that stuff already. I'm not getting anything current. So 15 packs is huge. That's a lot. That's a, what? That's a $20 bundle? A yeah. $20 purchase? So yeah. that's huge. Mm -hmm. And then for new players, we're updating both starting legendary quest lines so that several of the quests can also be completed in battlegrounds and will offer pack rewards from recent inspect recent expansions instead of classic yeah. again kind of they're 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 doing that across the board if you would get classic packs you're going to get the recent expansion and right. then they also made some changes to demon hunter uh, so they're going to be able to get all the demon hunter cards by doing the uh, prologue like yes. before but they're they're also going to uh, reward Demon Hunter class packs for players that have not yet completed it. And so. I, I think one of the most important things is they they also stated completing all Book of Heroes missions for a class will now unlock that class. Yes. That's so really you, cool. Before you had to like play games and practice and things like that. Now you just do the book of heroes, which is free content. 
and it unlocks the class. Yes, that is awesome. No more grinding against the innkeeper in solo, yeah. just trying to uh, get some levels up. So that that's that's exciting. Yes, that yeah. So they're doing so much that I'm a little overloaded because obviously we talked about this. The core set is is coming out. They're going to have set rotation coming, mm -hmm. and they have shaman updates. Now, they obviously, every class is getting updates with the new core set, but they made it a point to point out shaman. And uh, there are some cards they showed us. Uh, we're not going to go into that now. We're actually we're not doing a play portion this week. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about the cards they showed us for the core set and some of the shaman changes in our second half of the show during what would normally be our play portion. Yeah. And then obviously they announced the classic format, which we've talked about already. Uh -huh. uh, and we're celebrating the launch of the classic format by rewarding all players with a golden classic card pack just for logging in after the 20.0 patch when it goes live. So that's cool. I mean, obviously classic packs are going to be wild now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's that's really neat. Yeah. Uh, and then they announced the new game mode, which is going to be Hearthstone Mercenaries. Uh, links to this in the show notes. They didn't give a lot of details. Uh, they did say before Mercenary run, uh, run begins, players will assemble a team of mercenaries from their collection. So that's there's obviously going to be a lot to it. They haven't told us yet. Yeah. And I, I know there's been some interviews. I haven't found all the all the links to that yet. Uh, that have just happened this weekend. Uh, but some of these images of some of these mercenaries look awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to have, we, we, we had, we had kind of theorized before the solo contents book of heroes, right? Uh huh. What are they going to do when they're out of all 10 heroes? And they told us they're going to be doing book of mercenaries. There's going to be 10 mercenaries, I'm assuming one per class, and uh, we're going to have the stories of those mercenaries, which will come with bundles that have right. portraits, and you'll be able to get class-specific packs. Uh, and the first one is going to be Book of Mercenaries Rokara, which looks to be Warrior from the image, uh, and that's going to release on April the 6th. That's correct. So are we going to have the all the other classes done before then, or are they going to release these in parallel? Well, they did say that the book of uh, the solo content book of hero book of mercenaries is going to be a semi monthly basis. So they might start alternating them. Okay. Uh, and it and it tells the story of those mercenaries just like the book of heroes. Right, did. right, right, right. So, but we still have so, we still have like five more heroes to come. We do, and we have one coming up, which I have I have listed in the show notes later. Uh, but we have one coming up in March, uh, so obviously the March one's going to come mm -hmm. out, and then we're going to have the Book of Mercenaries, uh, April April sixth for Rokara. Yeah. And I like how they said semi monthly basis, which might mean they're going to alternate them. You're going to have a book of heroes one month then a book of mercenaries and a book of heroes and a book of mercenaries until right. book of heroes is done. Cause we've only had what is it four or five? We've had five. We've had five. So the next one will be the sixth one. Correct. So by the time they get into later in the year, midway through the year, they'll have uh, all the heroes done and then have to, they'll, they'll lean on the mercenaries and then yeah. maybe they can alternate it one next rotation. We'll, yeah. we'll just have to see. Uh, I'm happy with it, regardless. I, I'm excited too. I'm I'm ready to see this. I, I'm always excited for solo content because, as you know, I've said multiple times, I'm not really a ladder grinder. So the the fact that there is more for me to do in Hearthstone is phenomenal. So, so. after all that basic uh, gr uh, Year of the Griffin announcement, they announced the new set. Yes, which is Forged in the Barrens. That is correct. This excites me. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're kind of going back to that because I was alliance. They're, they're kind of going. I was a horde main. Like when I yeah. first started, uh, I spent a lot of my time in the barrens. I still remember. 
how awful Baron's trade chat was, you know, back in the day. So I, I am super stoked for this. Um, you know, they, they said they kind of wanted to go back and recognize the horde with this expansion and they're, they're they seem to. Yeah. So um, let's, let's just talk about it for a minute. They, they announced the pre-order is available now until uh -huh. March the 22nd, which so I think it's important to point out March the 22nd is a Monday. Which means March the 23rd is a Tuesday. Tuesday and they like so to they did these. not they did not release a release date. Correct. And a lot of that is because of what was said by XR and Celeste on previously on Twitter and in Reddit that they're going to release it when it's ready. Correct. But this kind of gives a soft release date of at least March the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And so March the 23rd is when we speculate that we're going to get patch 20.0, which is going to be the new core set and the new set, which is going to be Forge and the Barons. Now, they did not say that the mercenary solo content, uh, the, the mercenaries, uh, uh, new game mode is going to come out at the same time. So don't expect that in 20.0. Right. But right. Uh, if this goes by their normal cadence of, of putting, because they let you buy the bundles all the way up to the day, the midnight, the night before the set drops. Mm -hmm. So if that's going to happen, we can surmise that's going to be March 23rd. Yeah. So, now let's talk about it. Yeah. So, um, as with most sets, we're getting a new keyword, and mm -hmm. this keyword is Frenzy. That triggers when a minion survives the first damage taken. So uh, I think one of the uh, I think one of the examples they showed was a two three minion that if it attacks and survives damage, gets a buff to its its attack the next turn or something like that. Okay. okay. So. so, so that's something to note. You said something incorrect. You said when it attacks and, and or, does damage, yes, you're right. It, when it damage. takes damage. So it's when it takes damage, not yes. when it survives combat damage, which we've seen minions that have that before, where if it survives combat damage, it gets an effect. Mm -hmm. uh, this is different, which means in mage, you can ping the minion. Yes. And in any class, every single one of these frenzy cards, which are minions so far, I mean, they, they would have to be minions because spells can't have frenzy. They can't take damage. Uh, so any of these minions with frenzy probably will have the added voice, li voice line of, hey, loser, it wasn't me. <laughs> so Because you could play a frenzy minion. Yeah. Then you can turn around and ping it with Penflinger, getting its frenzied effect. And then you can cast a spell to bring Penflinger back. So I'm wondering if if Penflinger might need a nerf after Frenzy comes out. Penflinger has needed a nerf since Okay. <laughs> so I, I did watch I did watch uh, a, a little bit of the um, of uh, the game show. Show okay, now. yeah, I, I saw that. I saw and, a little bit of it. And there, there was time. there was one of the drawing parts was Crip drawing pin flinger. And <laughs> there was a conversation that happened right after that between Crip and Alec Dawson and Liv Breeden where Crip goes, I think we need to do something about pin flinger because I believe it is the single most played card in Hearthstone. Meaning number of times that card has been played total, not just how many decks it's in. Like in one game, that that card could get played twenty times. And Alex yeah. goes, Alex says, I don't know, it might still be the coin, but Pinflinger's getting close. Yes, <sighs> yeah. And Frenzy, the minute I saw Frenzy, I thought, oh my gosh, Pinflinger, because Pinflinger's neutral. So you could put it in any deck. And if you're running spells, it's just it's just an extra bonus. Also, the augment cards. I can't remember. The augment cards are from Year of the Phoenix, right? I believe that's correct. The Og Merchants? Yes, the Og Merchants. 
I think the Aug merchants were from you. I could be wrong. If they're still in standard, those are going to be strong as well. Uh, so that's our new keyword. We're also getting ranked spells. And ranked spells are really unique because the effect on the spell is upgraded when you reach 5 mana, which takes it to rank 2, and 10 mana, which takes it to rank 3. And the way you're going to know it's a ranked spell is it's going to have the spell name in the banner, and then it'll have rank one next to it. Yeah, the Og Merchants were from Ashes of Outland, so they are still around. Okay, so they, they are still going to be around. So the Og Merchants, if you're not spell heavy and you just want that activator uh, that has something, like gives it Divine Shield, the one that gives Divine Shield, well, some of these minions are going to be amazing. Yeah. So this is... I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what... What happens with the meta, meta with this frenzy? I think frenzy might be one of my favorite keywords. Yeah. Uh, since inspire, and I only like to inspire because of our podcast name. <laughs> um, All right. So the other big announcement they're uh, they're bringing with Forge of the Barons is ranked spells. Yeah, so, I just said that. Yeah these these are going to be effects <laughs> that upgrade. So you obviously were looking up. You're Og looking merchant. up uh, yeah. Og merchant stuff. Yeah. But yeah, the, the rank spells are neat because the mana cost doesn't change. So if it's a two mana right. rank spell, when it gets to the when and this is when you have total mana crystals. So in like Druid where you're ramping fast, it could happen faster. Yes. So when you get to five mana, it's going to have a new effect, but the mana is gonna stay the same. And then at ten mana, the final right. effect it's it's kind of it, like it, remember it's scroll great because because now the cards will still be relevant later in the game, even mm -hmm. if, you know, it was an early, originally it was meant as like, well, take, uh, what was it? They showed forked lightning, right? That's, that's yeah. the one they showed as the, the demo, you know, forked lightning dealt two damage to two minions. And then later in the game, that wasn't that good, but no. now it will upgrade as the game goes on and do more damage later. Oh, fork lightning. Is Fork Lightning being retroactively changed? Isn't that the one they showed, or was it was it something? No, oh, maybe the, it was a different. There is a new Shaman spell that's ranked. Chain it's not lightning. lightning. That's it's it. Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, okay, it, okay. It's okay. basically the same thing, only it kind of, kind of. Yeah. Which, which, you're not going to see any ranked spells outside the set, but they're coming out with a new uh, thing in this set called Spell Schools. Yes. And it is going to affect uh, cards not in the set. So spell schools are there's seven different spell schools, and they're going to be listed on the bottom like minion types do, mm -hmm. where you would normally see Murloc or Totem. You're going to see the spell school. The seven spell schools are Arcane, Fell, Fire, Frost, Holy, Nature, and Shadow. So they're like arcane has two spells from forge of fire that are going to be arcane spells and they're adding 44 spells from past sets fell has three well, from the they're not set. adding them they're adding the arcane they're tag adding them to, to yeah. those spells that's what i mean i'm sorry they're adding the tag to 44 existing spells from past sets fell's going to have three from forge and the barons two, 22 from past sets fire is two from this new set 43 to old cards frost is two from uh barons 24 from past sets holy is being added uh, is on five new cards In which barons. is is quite a bit yeah compared to the other the other schools and then 67 spells from past sets but that's nature nothing. is six yeah Nature is six and a hundred and twelve. Now a hundred you might really be... past spells that are considered nature spells now. So you you might be thinking, wow, druid, but that's probably gonna be druid and shaman and maybe a couple other from other classes. Yeah. And then from shadow is four new spells and a hundred and nine. Now again, it's probably they're kind of alluding that priest is gonna be getting some shadow love. And then of course we have uh you know, warlock, warlock and, yeah. and maybe some demon hunter. I right, we don't know. Right. We don't know for sure yet. But I love. I love. They did this with mech, where they brought in a new uh, minion type, and then they added mech to a bunch of things. So that was really really cool, and I'm, I'm really excited. 
how this changes Hearthstone, not just in Standard, mm. but in Wild and possibly even uh, Classic, because I'm assuming some of the Classic spells are going to get types. Now, there won't be synergies with those types. Right. Because they're only classic cards, but uh, you know, yeah, I'm I'm excited <laughs> to right. say the least. This is a huge change to the game. Yeah, yeah. So um, another important thing to note is that uh, the mercenaries, um, the legendary minions in Forged in the Barrens, will be mercenaries for the solo content. Yeah, yeah. It's. It, I like that they're tying this in, not not just for the solo content, but for the, the new game mode. Right, 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 right. Uh, I like that they're tying in a theme to the minions. I mean, they're not going to have any, I don't think they're going to have any kind of special thing like the Primes did. Uh, they There might be cards that, that get you mercenaries. I don't know. But I don't think it says mercenary on the card. But all of the legendaries are going to be considered mercenaries, and those legendaries are going to be in your solo content, in your uh, new game mode. So I like that they're kind of making this Hearthstone world mm -hmm. that involves Warcraft, but it's it's its own entity. Yes. And we're going to see a lot of past Barons legends, you know, that we knew from quest lines show up in this a little teaser to our second half of the show man creek if you were if you were a horde grinder and you made alts you had to go through man creek just to get up to level 20 that's right and it, so i love that they're bringing those personalities into hearthstone as kind of mainstay characters instead of just your core like uthers jaina's maiev those kind of characters yeah all right so that brings us to the pre-orders for the yes. Forged and the Barons. So, as you guys know, Blizzard loves to make an announcement at BlizzCon and then go, and by the way, pre-orders are available now. <laughs> and that was no different this year. Pre-orders are available now for uh -huh. Forged and the Barons. Um, the normal bundle, uh, which, you know, we, we always see is $49.99, includes uh -huh. 60 packs two random legendaries and the uh, card back. Mm -hmm. and which is the Hamul card back. The which Hamul is the card Torrent. back, yep. And then the Mega Bundle, uh, $79.99, same as in the past. You get 80 packs. This time, you also get five golden packs, two random golden legendaries, the Hamul card, pack, uh, card back, and the Hamul Rune Totem Hero Portrait. As well as the Battlegrounds perks. I, I think so, that's, that's a great deal for seventy nine ninety nine. So, correct me if I'm wrong. The normal bundle usually comes with one legendary. One and then the mega... Yeah. The mega bundle comes with one, one golden, golden. And we're getting two? That's correct. They've doubled, so, doubled the amount of legendaries you get from each bundle. So, I have already gotten the mega bundle. I don't think I'm going to need to buy both because I do have a lot of the class packs uh -huh. unopened that I can use when the new set comes out. And, uh, you know, honestly, you don't just two extra legendaries. Is not necessary for me? Well, and the 60 packs, I got lots of gold. I'm, too right I'm now. a, I'm a collector. Um, I like to try this. You know, I, I, I completed the, uh, dark moon fair set pretty early. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to buy both bundles. Um, and well, as a collector, you don't have to buy both, right? Well, because you don't, you don't get anything special out of the normal, out of the that you normal, don't get in the but mecha. I get the packs and I get the extra legendaries that I don't have to then craft with That's dust. Fair. That's fair. And I, now to be, to, to be more specific, thanks to the, uh, thanks to the rewards track. Yes. I have 7,300 gold going into this expansion. At no wow. point... I think I'm at like 6,000. At no point in the last five and a half years of Hearthstone, of me doing dailies between expansions, have I ever had this much gold going into an expansion. Now, it is important to note that neither of these bundles come with the Battle Pass. 
So if you are wanting to get the battle pass, which they did, uh, I didn't put it in the show notes, but they kind of talked that the battle pass is going to change. It's actually going to have a hundred levels, but the XP you get and the amount of gold you get is going to be the same. They're just cutting everything in half. Uh So you get them, get the levels and the gold faster. So you get like chunks of 150 where you would normally get 30, uh, uh, 300. I mean, Mm -hmm. so, uh, but it's at half the XP. So it just feels better. Um, so if you do buy one of these bundles, don't expect to get the battle pass. Right, you so will have, you to, buy the, the you have pass, to buy the battle pass separately. You'll you will, and that's one of the reasons why I'm just doing the mega bundle right. because that's eighty dollars, and then I'm thinking another twenty dollars for the battle pass. It's a hundred dollars, and that's kind of kind of be my limit, mm-hmm. uh, in, in you know where I'm at. So, uh, I would like to get both but i don't feel the need to get both because i have not had a problem getting all the card sets that's uh, okay all the cards that's, for that's set. fair and i mean granted, which is good like i, mean, like I said good thing. like i said i have enough gold for 73 packs now that is more more than i would get that's right now that's more packs have, huh? yeah i still have a month but that's more packs than i would get buying the regular bundle maybe i don't buy the regular bundle maybe i just buy the mega bundle and then buy 80, I should have 80 or 90 packs worth of gold at that point. And then, yeah. or maybe I only buy 53 packs, save my extra 2,000 gold to buy the mini set. There yeah, see, are options for free-to-play players. And the reason those options are here because of the Battle Pass. And I know they've gotten a lot of flack about the Battle Pass, and they've owned up to that. And they've had to make changes to make it better, and they're, and they're open to making additional changes, but... Right now, as somebody who spends on the game, I would normally be like, oh, I'm buying the normal and I'm buying the mega. I'm going to set myself up for not having to open so many extra packs beyond the set. I'll probably still have to buy, buy, buy some extra packs, but I don't have to. Well, now I feel like I can just buy the mega bundle and still be in the same position I would normally be in buying both bundles. So I currently have 16 unopened packs of... Uh, I have like 20, 27. I'm going to open those when the set comes out just yes. for the dust to craft cards that I'm missing from the set. So, I mean, there are yes. options for players to get the cards they need. Uh, this, is, I have... this is the best time in Hearthstone for being able to get cards you want to play with. I have Skolomance Skolom- packs and I have uh, Dark Moon Fair packs, and obviously those are just going to go to dust. Mm-hmm. However, I do still have the Warrior class packs. Oh no, I, I don't have the Warrior class packs. I opened those. I have the Paladin class packs, and the uh, the Priest class packs. And I will be getting the next he- Book of Heroes, which you know, the little spoiler for later in the show is going to be the Rogue class packs. So that those class packs will open missing cards from the current, that class right. from the current set rotation. So if I wait until after Fours and the Barons comes out, Fours and the Barons cards will be in that list. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably end up just opening those first and then opening my Fours and the Barons packs. Yeah. Upping my chance of getting other cards. So that's my plan. Now, beyond that, we are getting a login reward like we usually do. And those are, are live now. They actually went live mm-hmm. uh, uh, Saturday. Uh, no, Friday. They went live Friday evening. They said now, but it took about two hours for the patch to come out. Right, right. Uh, and it's Shadow Hunter Vol'jin. Uh, this is a good card. We'll talk about it when we when right. we go over get, go when we over get to the, the cards. Yeah, we've got set, still got some other stuff we got to move on and talk about. But I've already played with it, and it won me a game by nice. pulling their ze- pulling their Zephyrus out of their hand. Okay. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. All right. So, with all that being said, we also got a patch that evening on Friday, mm-hmm. the nineteenth. Patch nineteen point six. So it's live now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was some, it, uh, there was one constructed balance update, which uh-huh. was High Abyss Allura from four mana to five mana. Zoroshio, this is in your wheelhouse. 
Yes, this is why I hit Legend, because I had a sneaking feeling they would sneak a patch in to add this con. Because they always have to do a patch, because we, we got to be able to pre-order the set. Now, I didn't necessarily expect it Friday. I expected it, like, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but Haya Besalora, this significantly impacts that ramp cheese paladin. Uh, and it does impact regular uh Pal uh, pure paladin or or even Librum paladin. Now the Librum paladin uh -huh. usually cuts high abs Allura, but the pure paladin doesn't because the right. pure paladin wants you wants to pull those blessing authorities. They want to pull the the Librums of hope and four mana to five mana. Is it still playable? I think in ramp paladin, it will probably still be played, but it's going to lower the effectiveness of that deck because it can't cheese out a win on turn five. Right. It'll be more like turn six now. Yeah. Uh, or five with the coin instead of four with the coin. Right. But in pure Paladin, I think it's fine. Okay. Okay. Because if you get your curve right, a lot of times you have a free Librum, and on five you could play this with the free Librum of Wisdom, uh -huh. and it still does the same thing. A lot of times you were waiting till five or six to play anyway, so you could couple it with a spell. Um, it, it does kind of lower the uh, the the first day of school thing where you can do it on four. Now you have to wait till five. Uh, but I think it's still playable. I'm not going to dust this. Okay. Uh, okay. Be, you know, I recommend the standard rule is when they nerf a card, you dust it. And then if you end up needing it, you can craft it again with the dust that you got. But that takes willpower not to spend that dust on something uh, else. Right. Um, right. I don't have that willpower. So uh, I, because I craft golden cards because I'm an idiot. Um so I'm not going to disenchant this, but everybody to their own. Yeah. Okay. Now they did put a dev comment on this. It said, Hi, Abessalora is going to five mana in order to push the swing turns she enables. When an individual card contains a large amount of dex win rate, as Allura does, it breaks the promises of Hearthstone of a Hearthstone match. So basically, and they talk more about it in the Spellburst trigger, trigger, but basically they're, they don't want that deck to go away. They just want to push it out a turn. Right. And I think that's fine. I think it's fine. I think Ramp Paladin was a fad that turned good because of the high level of uh, variance. The, 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 high, the, the variance was predictable because you could build your deck in a way to make it happen the way you want with Tip to Scales. But pushing it out a turn, it might just be too slow to compete with other tempo decks that are, are really hitting their stride at turn five. If you do this on turn five or turn six, uh, then all of a sudden uh, your opponent might have lethal, regardless of how many Murlocs you have on the board. Yeah. So, okay. Well, uh, that brings us to uh, the Battlegrounds updates uh, for 19.6. They introduced a new minion top, Quill Boars. Um, There'll be more details come April. Yeah, so uh, that means we're not going to see this till April. Right. And I'm... So, why would they put a new minion type in Battlegrounds that doesn't reflect standard? Do you think we're going to get a new minion type Quillbore announced in Forged in the Barrens? I think we might, yeah. Um, although... we don't know all the cards. Uh, although, the cards. there was talk in, what, in the... Uh, Q and A panel that this is the first battlegrounds only minion top. Okay, okay, I missed that. So, 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 so actually, this board. this may be a this may be a battlegrounds only minion. We may not see Quill Boys in in uh, standard, but we'll that gives that gives a uniqueness even more than it already has in yeah. battlegrounds. Kind of separating battle it a little players. bit more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They are also ending the Dark Moon prizes, which obviously, as Dark Moon goes, as we move on to the next set, Dark Moon prizes are going to go away too. Uh, I thought this was really interesting. Minions summon first before checking for triples. Yeah, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, that's not a big deal. But then now that I think about it, there are sometimes you could set it up so a minion will summon 
if if it has like Cadgar in play, you summon one, it makes the triple, it pops into your hand. Now you have room for the second summon. Right. You basically miss out on a summon with this. And I think this is a balancing to kind of go along with a lot of people using Cadgar in a cheesy way. Uh, they won't have this advantage anymore. Yeah. And uh, they're removing Captain Hook Tusk from the hero pool right now. And they're also making some various hero and minion balance changes. If you're interested in them. seeing those, also they're they're also making some uh, various changes to bal uh, to balance duels as well. If you guys yes. are interested in those battlegrounds minion changes or the duels balance changes, you can find a link to those in our show notes at HeroPowerHS.com. Yep. Uh, Pre-order for Forge of the Barons, as we talked about, already available. Uh -huh. uh, Vol'jin. So tell us, So we, we talked briefly about Vol'jin, but Vol'jin is a 5-mana 3-6 neutral legendary with a mm -hmm. battle cry, choose a minion, swap it with a random one in its owner's hand. Yes, so... This is kind of like you can play this like a dirty rat, and you can also play it kind of like a youthful blue, uh, uh, youthful brewmaster, but you can cheat out a minion. I know Regis Kilbin actually played this. See, I'm not cheating out. Of Go ahead. He, he actually played it and he would, he played it in shaman, yeah, and cheated out Malagos. Okay, okay, he, he would bounce. He would basically bounce a totem to his hand, put Malagos out. Again, it's for five mana, so, you know, uh, or I, seven if you count the hero power, but gave him room to do more spells. I'm not thinking of this as a cheat card. I'm thinking of this as, oh, you just stacked all those Librams on a minion? Now I'm going to oh, return yeah. that minion to your hand, and you no longer so, have those Librams. So I was playing against a druid. And it was this unique druid that I couldn't quite figure out what they were playing. And right now on the ladder, I'm getting a lot of those in my MMR where mm -hmm. people are just making up crazy decks. And I I was playing it. I, I just put it into my Envoy Quest Warlock. And I sent back his 3-5 taunt that's free, uh, that becomes free. Uh -huh. I sent that back to his hand and I put out Zephyrus. So then I killed his Zephyrus, and, and I was like, oh, so he's Highlander. So then I later burned his Elise, and I ended up burning his Shadow Hunter Vol'jin that he had put in his deck. <laughs> so we'll talk more about Shadow Hunter Vol'jin and uh, what we think can be done with him yeah. when we get to the second half of the show. But he's a, I think he... He's probably the best reward we've gotten since Vargoth. Okay, okay. It, Var, the, he's like Vargoth level of shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, they also released a free card back for everybody that you can get in the shop. It's the 30-year yes. anniversary Blizzard card back, and it is sweet. <laughs> it's beautiful, and there's a lot going on with this card back. Yeah. Uh, I will say when you have it in play the way the cards stand up sideways, it's a little flat looking, but when you're looking at it, like when your opponent's discovering and they're, they're seeing it, it's got, it's so beautiful. It has the 30 logo with a blue around it. And it has like a lion's head. It looks very Alliance. Mm -hmm. It looks like the lion's head that's on Anduin's shoulders. Uh, and it's beautiful. Now, the one thing that all they said was, the BlizzCon 30th, 30th anniversary card back will be available in the shop. And I was like, oh, man, I got to buy this. They never once said it was free, right. which I think was a missed marketing point. Because I logged in, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm probably going to spend five bucks or whatever it is on this thing. Because I got to have it. I'm right, like Pokemon. Right. Got to catch them all. And I saw it, and it was like, for purchase, free. And I was like, whoa, why didn't they tell us it was free? Because... Some people may have been like, oh, I'm not, I, I don't buy things, so I'm just going to ignore it. So if you want this card back, uh, even if you don't want this card back and just want to put it in your collection, go into the shop. It's free to buy right now. It didn't yeah. give a time on how long. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 it did. 
in the shop until March the second. So you you, you got you got uh, you've got a week. Yeah, a week. March March second. If you're listening to this episode on the download on Monday, twenty second. It yeah. So the the second will be a week from Tuesday. So yeah, you have a week and a day to get this. Yeah, so, so go into, I'm, go I'm having I'm having to log into all my alt accounts across all <laughs> regions to make sure I have this card back. But it's free, it, it which is, is wonderful. Free. Yeah, and then of course there were uh, uh, let's see where were we at in the show. Notes? There were lots of bug fixes. Uh, most of them weren't too notable. And then the Book of Heroes Valera is coming March the second. So yes. obviously March the second, which is when that when when the purchase of that card back goes away, is we are going to have to expect another small patch. It might just be a server side patch, right. uh, but March the second we're going to have Book of Heroes Valera, which usually comes out with a bundle that you can get a unique uh, portrait and rogue packs. So mm -hmm. which I suggest at least getting the rogue pack from the uh, solo content and saving it for the next set to drop. Okay. All right. So that, uh, let's see, that brings us to this week's Tavern Brawl, the great amalgamation. What horror has science wrought? Build a deck. All minions count as elementals, mechs, demons, murlocs, dragons, beasts, pirates, and totems. Uh, as I was out of town the second half of the week, I have not done this yet, but I have, but I have, I have seen some really great posts on Twitter, including one from our friend Espo about his exploits playing this. Uh, and what did, what did you end up doing? So I ended up doing Paladin cause I always do. Have we had, I don't remember this tavern brawl. Is this a new one? Uh, no. I think we've had something similar. I don't know if we've had this exact one. Yeah, I don't know if it was exactly similar. like this, but you basically got to build. I think before it was a random deck, and and they would just count as anything. This you got to build a deck, and I went, I I went like a Murloc style deck, and I thought I threw in a couple extra things like uh, uh, I put in Ragnaros the Light Lord because. Mm -hmm. You can play with wild cards in this, which is really cool. I yeah. put it in the curator so it would draw more because it wouldn't, since I had mainly Murlocs, it, those Murlocs also counted as other things. And then I didn't win. So I was like, why don't I just do an Azoth package? So I put in Azoth, and it's really neat to be able to kind of cheat out Ragnaros the Light Lord <laughs> or draw him really early or drop him on the board because it thinks it's another another minion type right. other than elemental. So that was really cool. It was fun. I, I liked it. Uh, it goes on my list of ones. I'd, I'd play more than once every now and then. So a lot of fun. Okay. Awesome. So that's going to bring us to what would normally be our deck of the week. Um, however, due to this being reveal season, yeah, we are not going to be playing a deck the next couple of weeks. We are yes. instead going to be focusing on uh, card releases because there are quite a few coming down the down the pipeline. Um, so, so just just to kind of give you guys a timeline. Uh, we're probably not going to have a deck of the week for at least two, maybe three weeks. I, I was um, thinking probably three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the cadence of releases. Uh, we we I don't know when they're going to start showing uh, Forged in the Barrens uh, cards, but we most likely will not be showing any Forged, Barons, uh, Forged in the Barrens cards next week because... On Thursday, they're supposed to give us all of the core set. So that's mm -hmm. all the cards that are that are staying, coming from Wild, and the 29 new cards. Well, the rest of the 29, because we have a couple here. But today, we're going to talk about the uh, core set cards that were announced, uh, a combination of, of, of cards being kept, cards being kept but changed, mm -hmm. Wild cards, new cards, and then we're going to talk about the Forge and the Baron cards, that uh, were released at BlizzCon. Yeah. 
So, all right, well, let's get started with yeah. standard cards that are remaining unchanged. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Tyrion, Forging, and Fireball. Now, you notice Fireball yeah. gets the new tag. Fireball has fire, so it is a fire uh, school. Uh, and so other than that, it's unchanged. And I kind of, I've had a lot of people say, oh, we're going to finally be able to rotate out Tyrion. I was like, I don't think they're going to get rid of Tyrion. He's not overpowered. He's not underpowered. He's actually right. He, he kind of is a fringe card where you're like, if I want a big minion, I just throw in Tyrion. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so Tyrion's very much played, uh, and sure he gets cut in more advanced builds, but that's what a a core set card is supposed to do. Right. It, it's a card that you put in until you get one of the newer cards that were released that fill in that slot. Now that's probably going to be somebody like your rel, your rel might, if you don't have your rel, you want to put Tyrion in. Mm -hmm. Then when you get your rel, you take, you take your rel, uh, and you're running, if you're running pure, you take Tyrion out and you put in your rel. So I, I like the inclusion of keeping Tyrion and fireball and fireball is just iconic. I know a lot of people say, can you just get rid of Fireball? It may just have to burn your face. It's, it's just That's what they do. That's just what they do, yeah. So, all right. Uh, moving on, we have... <laughs> oh, the new changed standard card. So we are getting have you new... seen these? Yes, we are getting new versions okay. of the dragons, Ysera, Malagos, and Deathwing. Yes. So I didn't get these in the slide fast enough, but the first one is Ysera the Dreamer. It's a 9-mana 412 dragon, just like before, but it's being changed to Battlecry. Add one of each dream card to your hand. Now, there's still five dream cards, the same ones. They've changed them a bit. Uh, the, the, the one that bounces a minion back to your hand is going to one mana, and uh, it only targets enemy minions. You can't... So they didn't want you to be able to play your Sarah Bouncer, play your Sarah Bouncer, and just constantly bounce her, which makes sense. Right. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they, they've adjusted the other cards. I think the only one was a 7-6 dragon didn't change, but all the rest got adjusted by mana mm -hmm. or stats. Uh, she's going to be good. Now, there'll be hand space concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, at 9 mana... And adding five cards to your hand, that's that's yeah. going to be pretty pretty difficult. So not only is she a big minion on the board, she's also a refill mechanic, which uh -huh. is different than the way she played before. Because she didn't give you a, a card, she only gave you one, and it was at the end of your turn, so you couldn't utilize that card that turn. But you'll be able to do that now. Uh, do I think she has a specific class she goes in? Probably still Druid, mm -hmm. but... I think she's more flexible for other classes now. Okay. Then we had... Now, one other thing to note. They did say that the original versions of these will still be playable in Wild. So that they're not getting rid of those versions. Those will rotate the Wild with the new Legacy set. Mm -hmm. And these new versions are going to be put in Core set. So if you play Wild, you can play the original Ysera and this Ysera. There'll be two different cards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then there's Malagos, the Spellweaver. Nine mana, four twelve, battle cry, draw spells until your hand is full. Yeah, so it says draw spells. So does that draw it from your deck? It uses the word draw. It doesn't say add spells to your hand until they're full, which we've heard that verbiage before. So if it draws spells from your deck, which I haven't found clarification on this uh, since it's such new new news. If it draws spells from your deck, A, it's a deck thinning mechanic, and B, you could target specific spells in your deck to make sure you draw those for combos. Secondly, this is a neutral card, so you can put mm -hmm. it in any class. Right. And then lastly, if it does generate from outside of your deck, that's just even more more late game tools. So, if you so my, my understanding of the way the card is written is it's going to be more of a deck thinning mechanic. You will draw okay. spells from that's your deck. That's what I thought deck. too. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
And then we had Deathwing the Destroyer. So Deathwing is still a 10 mana 12 12 with Battle Cry. Destroy all other minions. So that's the same. Uh huh. Discard a card for each destroyed. So now he is not going to completely destroy your hand if you're nope. only playing Deathwing on a board of one or two minions. You're only going to discard one or two cards. And if you play it on a board that has no minions, you get a 10 mana 12 12. That is correct. Which kind of plays the way the the warrior Deathwing does. If you play it on an empty board, he's a 10 mana 12 12. I really like this version of Deathwing. The only concern I have is Vestidious. If you're listening, read this card. <laughs> he, he has had a history of playing Deathwing and going, oh my god, where'd my cards go? Uh, so uh, This actually favors... Uh, Vestidious a little bit. He's punished less for not reading the card. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, one thing I want to point out here that's is the watermark on these cards. I didn't notice it until just now. What is it? A dragon? I can't really tell. It looks like a dragon side view with a tail yeah. wrapped around. It almost looks like a moon, but uh, it makes me. I wonder if they're going to change the core set watermark every year or not. Yeah, we'll All see. Right. We'll let's see. Uh, let's move on to some uh, updated standard cards, including Feral Spirits. So it's a three mana summon two two three Spirit Wolves, just like with Taunt, just like it always has been. But now it only overloads one instead of two. Yes. Yeah, so this goes in line along with the rest of these cards. Uh, of the the shaman changes they're making yeah. to make shaman a little different, a little more playable, and a little more playable without relying on set cards. The problem with shaman is if the set was bad for shaman, shaman was bad. If the set was good for overpowered for shaman, shaman was overpowered. Yeah. The the base set, the classic and basic sets were not very good on their own. And they were very punishing because overload mechanic was just outdated. It was good at the time at release, but as the power creep happened, overload didn't change. So they overload cards were just bad. Yeah. Uh, then we got Earth Elemental. So it's a, it's remaining a five mana seven eight taunt, but its overload is going from three down to two. This is very playable now. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And then. I think one of the most, one of the best changes is Lightning yeah. Storm. Lightning Storm is, th is still three mana. It's now a nature spell. But instead of dealing two to three damage to all enemy minions, it deals a flat three damage guaranteed to all enemy minions and overloads two. So if you have spell damage plus one, then it's a four damage. It's not a three to four. So you don't Correct. have to have spell damage to, to flatten this. So there's less of a need for the Wrath of Air totem, which is the spell damage totem, uh, which goes into our next change. Right, which goes into our next change, which is uh, they are doing away with Wrath of Air totem, which was the spell damage plus one totem, and they are introducing strength totem. At the end of your turn, give another friendly minion plus one attack. Yeah, so this kind of promotes more of a board-based strategy. Uh, you know, if you start stacking totems on the board, this totem will start buffing the other ones. Because a lot of times, people would ignore the 0-2 totems because they're just 0-2s. They're not going to be able to attack. Well, this if you summon this with, say, a healing totem on the board, now your healing totem at the end of turn might turn to a 1-2. And now can trade into one ones and then heal itself back. So your opponent's going to have to address this yeah. totem and yeah. any totems it buffs. So if if you're a longtime listener of Hero Power and you're not already in our patron only Discord, you're probably thinking, "Man, I wonder what Versika thinks about this." Well, <laughs> if you were in our Discord, you would know because Versika said. The strength totem prevents shaman from being able to reach and high roll a board clear of four toughness minions. 
But now that Lightning Storm always does three damage, it doesn't need the Wrath of Air Totem to get that minimum three damage across the board. Really, the only time he, as a Shaman player, was ever hoping for Wrath of Air was on board, board clear situations. So the Strength Totem will be a useful role almost always in the early game. I would say early game effectiveness puts it at being a decent roll about 40% of the time versus Wrath of Air only being useful 33% of the time. So there's Versika's thoughts on the, the yep. change, and it, he has some other thoughts about the Shaman class, which you can get by joining our patron-only Discord for as little as yeah. $1 a month. He has a lot of uh, uh, concerns about the Shaman, shaman class, and hopefully, I am hopeful that those will be addressed with the Shaman rework, uh -huh. um, which they really seem to be focusing on Shaman with the core set changes. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on. We got some wild cards that are remaining unchanged that are going to be in the new core set, including Tomb Pillager, which you guys may remember from a while back. It's a four mana, five, four death rattle add a coin to your hand. For Rogue. For Rogue, yeah. And we're getting the neutral Anoyatron back. The two mana, one, two, taunt Divine Shield mech. Yeah, I, I think of these two, the Anoyatron's kind of the biggest one. That It's just going to kind of slot in a lot of different decks. Tempo decks for early stall. Uh, aggro decks for just protecting your other minions. I think it's less of a of a uh, abused card when we don't have... Uh, mm -hmm. magnetic in in the standard set. Before, Neutron was horrible to deal with because of magnetic. Well, now that we don't have magnetic, it's probably just a good, solid minion. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, we have an update to Menagerie Warden. It's coming back to the core set. It was a six-mana, five-five battle cry, mm -hmm. choose a friendly beast, summon a copy of it. It's now going to be a five-mana, four-four. Yes, so they've lowered the mana and the stats to kind of put it in line so you can get it out earlier, but it's not an overpowered stat boost in the yeah. mid game. Uh, I'm kind of, they've obviously said they're going to change the core set every year and they kind of tune it for the, the sets that are going to be coming out that year. So I'm wondering how beast heavy they're wanting to go with Druid and, and I'm not against it. Uh, We'll talk more about some of the cards that were revealed for Barons, and there is yes. one Druid card in there, and this would work really well with it. And with Frenzied, it then can pick up a Frenzied Beast if there is one. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can... So I like it. It's good. Yeah. All right. We've got some new cards coming in the core set. Of course, oh, yeah. as was hinted at, they are uh, moving Edwin Van Cleef out of... Uh, the core set they're replacing and he's be, him. His, his buff his nerf is being reverted so he'll go yes. back to three mana going to wild correct uh but his daughter is taking his place in the road yes. core set just as she did in the defias brotherhood in world of warcraft uh vanessa van cleef is coming to rogues she is a two mana two three combo Add a copy of the last card your opponent played to your hand. This is big because I love cards that make make your opponent decide something, whether it's positioning on the board or what cards they play. We saw this with Mur Murazon. It's like I could do this great big play, but then they're going to be able to make the same play next turn with Murazon if they have it. So you had to think that with Priest. Well, now with Rogue, you're going to have to go, I'm going to end on a Fireball to face. But mm -hmm. if they play Vanessa Van Cleef and they get the Fireball, they'll have lethal or the possibility of lethal. So maybe I need to play something else, play, play my Fireball now and then finish with Arcane Intellect, which usually you want to play Arcane Intellect first to see if you draw into other options. So it, it'll make your opponent think, well, do I mind giving them a Fireball or would I rather give them an Arcane Intellect? And it might make them make suboptimal plays. Right. So I love that they're giving this, giving this to Rogue specifically. And I just, not only the flavor, but the usability of Vanessa Van Cleef at a two-mana spell at a two-mana minion, meaning 
Obviously, it has to be comboed with something, but meaning you have room to combo, play Vanessa Van Cleef, and then maybe the mana to spend on whatever you got from Vanessa. Right. And then we're also getting a neutral legendary minion, Overlord Runtok. It's a five mana, three six with rush. <laughs> Whenever this attacks, give plus one plus one to all minions in your hand. So of all the core cards that were shown, this one tells me the most. This tells me two things. A, we're going to see Rush in the core set. Uh -huh. They're not afraid to put Rush in this core set, which Rush is a really strong mechanic because uh, it's a minion tempo and removal at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to see more Rush minions. Secondly, hand buff yes in an interview with alec dawson uh they believe that hand buffing is kind of a core set ability it's something that should be should have been in the core set that they obviously didn't put in until uh, what was a mean streets correct and it mean wasn't streets. very strong in mean streets yeah uh so uh they want it to be kind of a core set thing and this is hand buffing in neutral mm -hmm. and it also tells me we're probably going to see hand buffing in in uh, the hand buffing classes that were uh, hunter, uh, warrior. warrior, paladin. Yeah. So this is rather interesting. Now we can see hand buffing in classes that didn't have hand buffing. Right. Like you can see it in rogue. You can see it. Zoo warlock. warlock. Yes. Zoo warlock. This jumps out to me and says, "I want to put this as zoo warlock." Yeah. You know, because you're constantly drawing and getting small minions, and now you're bringing them back with Raise Dead, and then you play on you. You maybe play Raise Dead, getting some of those small one two mana minions, and instead of playing them that turn, you play Overlord Runtack, clear a minion that's that that's contesting the board, leaving a decent maybe a three four or three three on the board, and then you have buffed up minions in your hand, maybe a buffed up animated broom. I don't know. So. This is going to have a pretty big impact on a tempo-based strategy yeah. branching into possibly an aggressive strategy. At five mana, it's hard to put it in aggressive, but it might be like a comeback mechanic for aggro decks. All right, moving on. We also have uh, Novice Zapper. It's a one mana, three, two shaman minion uh, that is spell damage plus one, overload one. So... In effect, this is this kind of fills the gap that Wrath of Air Totem had. Uh, Wrath of Air is a, was a essentially a two mana uh, zero two that gave you spell damage first form. This is a one mana three two that has overload one, so it's essentially two mana's worth of cost. So, if you wanted to rely on Wrath of Air Totem, even though it was a twenty five percent chance to to roll it. You now can put Novice Sapper to kind of fill that gap if you want to play a spell-based strategy. So mm -hmm. you don't have to... I know that the new totem strength of... The, the strength totem kind of favors a board-based strategy, but it doesn't mean that Shaman is not going to have spells because right. they clearly are, and spell damage is going to be premium at one mana. Yeah. All right, next up we have a rare priest uh, shadow spell called Thrive in the Shadows. It's two mana. Discover a spell from your deck. This is this is neat with a lot of the minions that are in. I don't know if this is a card that will stay in the next core set revamp, but they are wanting to lean into Shadow and see if they can bring back... They've obviously brought back the uh, uh, Shadow form, and they've said they're going to have more Shadow cards and some damage to face shadow card while they're not bringing back my, uh what was it mind blast uh yeah. because it's five damage they they said there are going to be some that do two three or maybe four points of damage to face so i'm interested to see where this brings shadow uh now this is discover a spell from your deck mm -hmm. so it's not like you're getting a copy of it it's just it's card draw but right. it's targeted card draw so uh that's good all right, and then we have a Warlock Demon minion, Fell Soul Jailer. This is an epic 
at five mana for a four six battle cry your opponent discards a minion yes death rattle return it so it's really important to note it says discards a minion so it's targeted discard meaning if there's a minion based combo this can help you target that obviously a death rattle is going to bring it back now I think the reason we can have this is because Witchy Lackey is no longer in rotation for standard. Mm -hmm. With Witchy Lackey, you could play this and then turn it into a six drop and the death rattle never triggers. And there aren't a lot of transform neutral cards uh, that can abuse this. And they've kind of thinned out the silence pool. So there might be ways to cheese this in a way in Warlock that you don't have to give them the card back. Uh, but this is definitely a disruption mechanic that we haven't seen. We haven't seen anything that makes your opponent discard cards, I don't think. Not that uh, I can remember recently. So, so that's that's cool. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for this being the core set. Yeah, yeah. So that does it for the core set reveals thus far. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to punch through before, some of these Forged we, in the Barrens pretty quickly. Before we get to the next slide... Is it this beautiful? This is by far some of the best art we've seen in a while. And for the audio listeners, we're showing the Forged and the Barons uh, kind of poster. And it's got this this uh, orc female. And it's very empowering. Basically, got, it has this lion. By the and, throat. And a real lion, not a lion humanoid. By the throat, giving it, like choking it out like a choke slam as they have their axe in the other hand to come forward. You have quill bores and, and you have Raptors and there's just ev- all this combat just going to the center. And if you've ever been in Barons during like the olden, olden days of vanilla on a PVP server, the, the Barons was, I mean, you didn't want to go through the Barons because you were afraid you were going to get ganked at any moment. So I'm, I'm excited. This is really cool there's a harpy there there's so many centaurs yeah yeah. i'm excited for this set all right let's uh get to it first up we have neutrals uh legendary shadow hunter volgen we've already kind of talked about yeah i wanted to take a moment uh we already described the card in the first half of the show uh to kind of say what we think this goes in uh, I really think Shadow Hunter Vol'jin is going to be, uh, and again, we'll remind you, five mana, three six, battle cry, choose a minion, swap it with a random one in its owner's hand. I think it's a premium card to put in Highlander decks. Now, whether Highlander decks are prominent in the next standard rotation, we don't know. But uh, I, even if you like, got back a King Crush or uh, or put out a King Crush from right. your hand or or you know, lots of ways to play Zephyrus and then get Zephyrus back, and, and and again, you know, we assume Zephyrus is going to to Zephyrus uh, is wild, rotating, but they haven't given all the cards from the core set, so I I we don't know if Highlander is going to be viable or if there's going to be another way to do it. But if Highlander is viable, whether it be in standard or wild, uh, I think Shadowhunter Vol'jin goes in. In, in those decks, no brainer. Yeah. And then there's, it's definitely useful in a combo disruption. Yeah. Uh, if you want to disrupt combos. All right. Next up, we have blade master Samuro. He is a four mana one, six rush minion with frenzy deal damage equal to this minions attack to all enemy minions. And we know in the core set, we are going to have neutral hand buffing. Yes. So if you get this thing buffed up, and then you pen flinger it, m- mind you, it's rush, so you can run into something. So, But this is four at four mana against like a token deck, like token mm-hmm. druid. You run this into a 2-2 two, two or a 1-2, and then it clears off that minion and any other one health minions on the board it really slows even against zoo it slows that progression early game yeah all right next up we have good old man crick which we talked about uh so man crick is a neutral legendary 
three mana, three four. Battle cry, help Mancrick find his wife. She was last seen somewhere in your deck. So what this does is it shuffles a spell, Olgra, Mancrick's wife, into your deck. Yes. It automatically casts, when drawn, summon a 310 Mancrick, which uh, immediately attacks the enemy hero. So as soon as you yeah. draw this card, a 310 Mancrick appears and attacks the enemy hero for three damage. Yeah, so... First off, I love that they the battle cry doesn't exactly tell you what happens. It's it it I mean obviously, you know, you you'll see what happens in the animation. Uh-huh. But uh I love that it kind of tells a story without taking away from the game. And then secondly, if you know the Mancrick story, uh the picture of Olga Mancrick's wife is her laying in the barrens amongst a bunch of quill boars and and I, other things. I want to. She is. She's yeah. basically a pin cushion. That's filled, exactly it. She's dead. I want to. I want to call out Liv and uh, oh, the other guy. I can't remember his name. That was that did the little yeah. skit of them as yeah. as like uh, game wardens. She because Liv asks him, "Well, what does Mancrick's wife look like?" And he says, "Oh, look for the the cushion. one that looks like a human pin cushion or a, an orc pin." Big, yeah. about this tall, green, looks like a pin cushion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so basically, Mancrick finds his wife. She's dead, and it summons a three ten that immediately attacks the opponent. Yes. Now, I like that this is a spell because could you imagine this? If it shuffled in a minion that immediately came out and did this, and you flipped it with a deck of chaos, and made it a ten three. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or or whatever the cost is, I guess is what it would be. Yeah. So, uh, now people noted that in this spell, it's got a mana gem but no cost. Correct. Which because is it, it casts when drawn. Yes, but other like bombs and things like that have a cost. So that's interesting. Well, I don't know if that the the um the cards um. What's the name of the card that shuffles a random uh, a random card into your deck that casts a random spell when drawn? Uh, oh, the Deck of Wonders. Deck are of those Wonders. Are five costs. Huh? Those are are five costs. Hmm. Okay. They all have costs. Well, interesting. I don't know then. So, I don't know if this is changing the way the mechanic is, or if I don't know. It's 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 really weird uh, to me because. You know, I don't know. It, 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 to me, it says something. I just don't know what it says yet. We'll have to see more cards revealed. Okay. Next up, we're looking at some neutrals from Forge in the Barrens. And first up, we have an Epic Minion Spirit Healer. It's a four mana, three six. After you cast a holy spell, get a random friendly, give a random friendly minion plus two health. Yeah, so. It's neutral, which means what are the holy classes going to be? Right now, we presume, we don't know yet. Paladin priest and Priest. And Paladin. Yeah. So this is a card that can go in both of those classes. Um, a lot of your holy spells and Paladin, again, we're presuming because we don't know yet, are probably buff spells. So this, this is going to be very interesting where you can buff a minion and then the spirit healer randomly buffs another minion. Yeah. So, excuse me. All right, next up, we have the Razor Main Raider. It's a five mana, five, six. Frenzy, attack a random min enemy. This can go face. This could go face. It doesn't have rush, but you can always pen, pen flinger it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. we're, we're we're getting a theme here. All right, and then next up we have <laughs> probably the most amazing Hearthstone card ever printed to date. So before we say what it is, Liv and the other guy, I, I hate that. Is it John? Josh? I can't remember. Maybe. Josh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, 
those two kind of like hyped this up like this is going to be some kind of crazy legendary reveal, and I loved it. So go ahead and read the card. It is a two mana, two three, amazing minion. Frenzy, add a random spell from your class to your hand. An amazing ability for the peon. It's the peon. <laughs> zug zug. Everybody so, that's played World of Warcraft has been in the Barrens, has had to take a mallet and go smack a peon. The, the job's done. Job's so, done. Friends. Frenzy at a random spell from your class. So you it's neutral, so you can play it in any class. And again, and I'm gonna say this over and over again because pen I think flinger. it's broken. You can pen flinger it. You can so you can pee on pen flinger, then it gives you a spell to bring the pen flinger back to your hand. Yep. Pen flinger needs a nerf. Pen, pen flinger is OP. All right. Now we're getting into the class cards, yes. and there weren't a lot of class cards until we get uh, to yeah, Shaman. Yeah, we, we only have like five more slots. So yeah. Uh, so fir first up is not the all Druid. the classes, unfortunately. Yeah. So first up is the Druid, and mm -hmm. uh, this is an epic beast minion, Druid of the Plains. So it's a seven mana, seven six with rush, frenzy, transform into a 6-7 Kodo with Taunt. This is ridiculous. So if it trades and clears a minion with 5 attack, meaning it stays alive because it has Rush and it's a 7-6, it then just turns into a 6-7 with Taunt. Yes, this minion I, is awesome. It's an epic, so not everybody's going to get it right away. Uh... I think this low key is going to be one of the strong standouts from Druid. Yeah. I'm calling it now. Uh, and then if they can't kill that se six seven, then you have the 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 warden that can turn it in turn turn into it or make a copy of it. So because that's coming back into standard. So they made sure that the warden can't be played on the same turn as this. Uh, but with you know ramp the way it is and lightning bloom you probably still can where you play this you lightning bloom and then maybe you pl you play the warden and then make two copies of this they both trade into minions and make six seven taunts yeah uh this is good this is very good all right next up uh we have hunter a uh beast minion a rare beast minion the sun scale raptor it's a one mana one three, frenzy, shuffle a sun scale raptor into your deck, with permanent plus two plus one. So the second one that comes out is going to be a one mana three four. That with this frenzy with this frenzy ability. So if you can if you can keep pin flingering this, it's going to get ridiculous. Oh my God. So first off, it's a one mana one three. It contests on turn one. They're likely not going to do three straight damage to this. Uh, they're going to have to, you know, two piece it. Rogues are going to have to backstab it and then hit it with their dagger, which will give you will shuffle in a a a what three four raptor. I'm guessing it will keep continuing to grow. Yeah. This is this. This, I I don't know where Hunter's going this set, and we haven't seen the core set cards for Hunter. Um, but if they can get back to a an early tempo based Hunter that that basically dominates the board early and uses its hero power to finish things off, finish off the opponent, it's gonna get sick. One man, one threes alone are just good. I, I may have to I may have to craft some golden pin flingers just because, and I hate myself for even thinking that. But <laughs> all right, moving on. The thing, the thing about hunters, you don't have a lot of spell or like low cost spells, so yeah. maybe pin flinger won't be great there. Yeah. So moving on, we have a common priest holy spell, desperate prayer, zero mana, restore five health to each hero. I don't know. 
I mean, it fits its name. If you're having to play this, you'd better be desperate. Yeah. I mean, you could be playing a priest deck that you're you're just stalling out for a big combo at the end, and in that case, you're probably not doing early damage to your opponent, so you're not healing your opponent. So this is zero mana for five heal, but do you want to yeah. take up a deck slot or two deck slots for this? I'm really going to have to see what holy synergies. Obviously, with the, what is it, the light steed? Or there, 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 there's a steed that buffs minions yeah. whenever there's healing. But that's if they're targeted by healing. This doesn't target them. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is for the, 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 the one that reduces spell costs in your hand, other cards in your hand when you cast a spell, the Nazmani yeah, uh, card. Yeah. Maybe... I, <laughs> I'm going to have to hold verdict on this one. I don't think it's good right now, but let's see the rest of the set, and then we'll, we'll look at it again. All right. Next up, we have a Shaman Legendary minion, Brucon. Uh -huh. Four mana, five, four. Nature spell damage plus three. Yeah, so this is our first real example of, of spell damage to a specific school. So three spell damage on a four man and minion. Yeah. That's really premium. If you're looking at kind of spell damage is, 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 is almost a mana and a half value. Turn, turn six, you can play this and a six damage uh, lightning storm. Yeah. Cause it's nature damage. I like that turn they're doing seven. the schools. Yeah. Turn seven, I guess. Yeah. That yeah. would be turn seven. I like that they're doing the school so they can give big boosts to damage uh -huh. to a specific school without creating these crazy OTKs where right. you're using multiple spells from different schools. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Next up, uh, we have Chain Lightning, which we talked about earlier. Uh, so, this is listed and under Warlock, it, but it yeah, should yeah, actually it, be Shaman. It's Shaman. Yeah. So, it's because I copied the. It's slide. it's a epic nature spell, two mana, deal two damage to a minion and a random adjacent one, upgrades to do three damage when you have five mana, and upgrades again to do four damage when you have ten mana. Now reminder, uh this this is like the spell stones, except they don't you don't have to do anything other than just be at that mana slot. So at five mana, uh, you're doing, uh, you know, the three damage to that minion and an adjacent, but the mana cost doesn't change. Right. I don't know if that's going to be the same across the board, but it looks like that so far from the two cards we've seen, we'll see the next one, that that's how it is. Yeah. So the next one is Imp Swarm. So this is actually a Warlock uh, common spell. It's a fail spell. Uh, mm -hmm. Two mana, summon a 3-2 imp. When you have five mana, it summons two 3-2 imps. And when you have ten mana, it summons three 3-2 three two imps. Two mana for for three 2-3 two, three imps? Obviously, you, you kind of... You, you think zoo... But then again, I mean, just tempo. Maybe this you is, don't. Yeah, at, at 10 yeah. mana, at 10 mana, this is summoning nine six worth of stats for two mana. Yeah, this is this is big. So I don't know if we're going to have any kind of sacrificial like we did before uh, with a plague of was a plague of fire. Mm -hmm. where you destroyed your minions to destroy that many minions. Right. Uh, if we have any kind of sacrificing or we're sacrificing demons or we're sacrificing our minions, this is premium at two mana for three minions on turn 10. Yeah, yeah. Gives so. us eight mana to do whatever else we want with it. That's right. So, all right. And that's it. That's it for now. Uh, next Oof. week, next week we will continue uh, looking at the new cards that have been announced. Uh, we get the full core set reveal this week. So On Thursday the twenty fifth is it twenty fifth? Yeah, uh, yeah. So we will go over the full core set next week. We'll show. We'll talk about any new cards or any changed cards, and we'll just briefly mention the cards that are remaining the same. Yep. Um, 
if you guys have yeah, any... we're, we're gonna have to jam through those though because yeah then that's expect that to probably be the entirety of the episode which is good because we shouldn't have too much news going usually the week after blizzcon you you don't hear a lot other than the new cards so right. uh, expect next week for us to just kind of recap our week give a couple highlights and then go right into the uh the core set yeah. reveals and reviews yeah so all right guys if you have any questions or comments about the show please email us at heropowerpodcast at gmail.com. Hit that subscribe button below on YouTube if you haven't done so already. And if you are interested in checking out our uh, updates for our patron-only Discord, again, you can find that at patreon.com slash heropower, and you can join for as little as $1 per month. Until next week, don't forget to use your hero power.